What you see behind me is a spreadsheet that highlights the row and column so you can always see where you are. And we're going to build this solution in Excel. When you look at lots of data, it's easy to lose your place. Most people use the mouse to select cells they want to highlight, but that's slow and error prone. Instead, let's find out how to customize Excel so that you can highlight a row, highlight a column, create a crosshairs effect by highlighting both the row and the column, and finally make it so you can toggle the highlighting on and off as you need it. I split this tutorial into seven levels, so you can start easy and work up to the final solution. Before we get to doing this automatically, let's have a look at how to do it manually. So you can select a row by clicking on the row number like this. Or you can select a column by clicking on the column header like this. But you can't select a column and a row at the same time and you can't change this gray highlight to a different color. So we're going to look at how to automate this and customize it. Let's move on to level one. Let's use conditional formatting to highlight the active row. First, I'll select the range we want to highlight. I'll click on this cell and hold down Control and Shift, press right arrow, press down arrow, let go of Control and Shift. Then I head up to the Home tab in Conditional Formatting. I click on New Rule. We're going to use a formula to determine which cells to format. So I click on this option and I head down into the text box here. Now I'm going to enter this formula. It's going to compare is the row, open and close parentheses, the same as the active cells, quote marks, row, close quote marks, close parentheses. So what this does is it checks if the row is the same as the active cells row. And if it's true, we're going to change the format. We're going to use the fill option and I'll choose this pink here. Click OK and click OK again. You'll see this row is highlighted. And if I want to highlight another row, I have to click on it and press F9 to recalculate. I don't want to have to keep pressing F9 to refresh the row. So let's move on to level two to find out how to do this automatically. What we're going to do is add one line of something called VBA code. Now, don't worry if you've never heard of VBA. It stands for Visual Basic for Applications. But we're going to go through this step by step. So the first thing to do is make sure you have something called the Developer tab. Normally, when you start Excel, you'll be on the Home tab. And you may not see the Developer tab. So I will show you steps you need to go through to make sure the Developer tab is visible. So you head up to the ribbon. You right click on an empty area, click on customize the ribbon, and then you scroll down until you see developer. Now check this box and click on OK. Now you can click on the developer tab. And what we want to do is go to Visual Basic. You can also press Alt and F11 as a shortcut. If I click on this, it opens something called the Visual Basic Editor. I'm going to click on level two because that's the worksheet we're interested in. I'm going to make this full screen, maximize that. And the first thing I'll do is select this drop down and choose the worksheet object. You see, that's put in some code. You don't have to understand what that does. All you need to do is make sure it says worksheet underscore selection change. And we're going to put in this line of code here, target.calculate. So, I will press tab to indent it. It makes it look nicer. Then I'll type in target.calculate and space. Now I'll hit enter and delete that extra line. That's all we need to do. And basically what this is doing is as soon as we change the selected cell on the worksheet, it's going to run this bit of code here which basically does the same as F9, but it only calculates the target cell. Let's go back to Excel to test out this works. And one way to do that is to click on this button here to view Microsoft Excel, or you could press the shortcut key Alt and F11, or you could just click on the Excel window like this. 
Now watch what happens. If I click on this cell, look, the line is highlighted in pink. I do the same here. There you go, automatic row highlighting. That's great for level two, but what if we want to say we want to highlight a column? Let's look at that in level three. We're gonna use conditional formatting again. First, I will select the range I want, which is Control, Shift, right arrow, down arrow, and let go of Control and Shift. Head up to the Home tab where it says Conditional Formatting. I'm going to apply a new rule. And we'll use a formula to determine which cells to format. So I click there, and we've got to enter the formula in this text box. The formula is equals column open and close parentheses, equals cell, open parentheses, quote marks, call, quote marks, close parentheses. Now what that says is if the column equals the active cells column, and col in this case is what we use to say the column of the active cell, this formula becomes true. And when the formula is true, we're going to format in this fill color this light pink. Click OK and OK again. And so you see that's highlighted column B. We are now going to go to the developer tab and go to Visual Basic. We've got to copy this code from level two onto level three. So what I just did was double click on this sheet and it gives me the same space to enter code. I'm going to paste what I just copied there. And so you see level three now has this code. Go back to Excel. And now when I click on a cell, you see the column is automatically highlighted. So that's great. The question now becomes, what if I want to highlight the column as well as the row? That's what we're going to look at in level four. So let's select the range we want to highlight. Control shift, right arrow, down arrow, let go of control shift. Head up to home, click on conditional formatting. Remember we want a new rule and we want to use a formula to determine which cells to format. Then we enter this formula equals or open parenthesis, row, open close parenthesis, equals cell, open parenthesis, quote mark, row, close quote marks, close parenthesis, comma, column, open and close parentheses, equals cell, open parenthesis, quote marks, call, quote marks, close parenthesis, and close again. And what that does is there's an or function. So either the row equals the active cells row, or the column equals the active cells column. When that formula is true, we will format the cell. And we're going to do this pink formatting again. Click OK and OK again. So now you see the column is formatted in pink and the row is formatted in pink. I will quickly go to the Developer tab and Visual Basic. We'll copy this, Control C and head into Level 4. Click here, Control V to paste. And when I come back to Excel, I should now be able to change the active cell. And you'll see that both the column and the row are highlighted. But what if we want to make it even more special? What if we want to make this a different color? So it will look a bit more like a crosshairs. Let's have a look at that in level five. We're going to apply two conditional formatting formulas. The first one is an AND formula, and the second one's an OR formula. So the AND formula will highlight the active cell, and the OR formula, if you remember level four, will highlight the row or column. So as before, we'll click on this cell, hold down Control and Shift, press right arrow, down arrow, let go of Control and Shift, and head up to Conditional Formatting. We'll apply a new rule, and then click on Use a Formula to determine which cells to format. Now enter this formula as equals and open parenthesis row open close parenthesis equals 
cell, open parenthesis, quote marks, row, quote marks, close parenthesis, comma, column, open close parentheses, equals cell, open parenthesis, quote marks, call, quote marks, close parenthesis twice. And so that's saying, if the row is the same as the active cell's row, and the column is the same as the active cell's column, this becomes true, and if it's true, let's format it. And I'm gonna select a slightly darker pink than before. I'm gonna click OK, and OK again, and you'll see it's highlighted the active cell. Now let's add the second OR formula. I'll fast forward this a bit, because it's the same as level four. And let's see what's happened. Oh, we notice there's a problem. We can see the column and the row being highlighted, but not the active cell. So why is that? Well, it's quite simple. We'll go into conditional formatting. We'll click on manage rules. We'll see this. It says that the rules are applied in the order shown. So first this rule, then this rule. What we want to do is switch this rule so it's below the other rule. I'm going to click on this row and then I'm going to hit this button down. And so what this will do is it will highlight this cell and make this a priority, and then it will do the row and column. So when I click OK, now you see it works as you expect. We have the active cell highlighted in darker pink, and the column and the row highlighted in the lighter pink. Now to get this refreshing automatically, remember we've got to go to the Developer tab and click in Visual Basic. I've got to make sure that this code is in level five. So I've already copied and pasted this from before. And remember the only line that we're adding is actually target.calculate. So once that's in, we can go into the Excel workbook and we can actually select a new cell and it will refresh automatically with the crosshairs that we've specified. Now, a quick note here, because we're using VBA macros, we've got to save this as a different file type. So head into the File menu, then click on Save As, and instead of an Excel workbook, we'll need to select Excel Macro Enabled Workbook, which is a .xlsm file. Click on Save, and that just makes sure that any macros that we've written inside the Visual Basic Editor will still be there when we open up the file. Now this is all great, but what happens if I want to get rid of the highlighting. Let's say my boss doesn't like it. Well, what I can do is go to conditional formatting, click on clear rules, and then click on clear rules from entire sheet. Now that gets rid of all the conditional formatting. However, it's a bit of a pain to put it back because you'll have to type these formulas again. Is there a better way to do this? It turns out there is, and we'll look at that in level six. Let's add a highlight switch. So I'm gonna type these words into E2, then I'm gonna hit Tab to go into F2. What I wanna do in F2 is have a drop-down menu. So to do that, head up to the ribbon, click on Data. Now click on Data Validation. And in Settings, I wanna change the validation criteria to allow a list. And the source is gonna be on, comma, off. That gives me two choices. Click OK, and you'll see in the drop down, I can select on or off. Now I'm going to click off, but you notice there isn't any change to the conditional formatting. It still highlights this. To make the change and to make this switch work as an on off switch, I need to go up here into the name box. I'm going to click on where it says F2, and then I'm going to type high light underscore switch hit return, and let's just change the name of F2 into highlight underscore switch so that we can use it easier in a formula. Next, and this is important, I need to select the same range as before. So I'll click on B7, hold down Control and Shift, right arrow, down arrow, let go of Control and Shift, and then go to the Home ribbon, click on Conditional Formatting, click on New Rule, and I want to select a rule type that says, use a formula to determine which cells to format. And this time, the formula we're gonna use is here. 
we're going to use equals if open parenthesis highlight underscore switch equals quote marks off quote marks comma true comma false and so that says if highlight switch equals off send the value of true otherwise send a value of false we're not going to format this at all we're just going to go press ok and then we'll go back to conditional formatting and click on manage rules you'll notice there's three different rules now the first one is the one we've just entered and what we want to do is check this box to stop if it's true so the way this works is if highlight switch it has the value of off this becomes true and if this is true we're going to stop all of these rules so i'll click on ok and then you'll see now there's no highlighting i'll click here no highlighting and if i turn this to on the highlighting comes back well hey so now we don't have to manually remove the highlighting we can use this on off switch to toggle it but we can make this even more slick how let's find out in level seven so i've set up level seven to be exactly the same as level six except for one little difference when i click on this cell and head up to the name box you'll see there's a two after this so instead of highlight switch it's highlight switch underscore two and i'll show you in formulas in the name manager you can see that there's a highlight switch for level six and highlight switch two for level seven that's because we can't have the same name on two different worksheets so the next step is to add a vba macro we'll head to the developer tab and click on visual basic now we've opened this up at level seven i'm going to add a new line and then type in the macro sub for sub procedure space toggle underscore click open and close parentheses and return then i'm going to use a single quote mark for a comment to say that this toggles the high light on and off return and return again tab to indent this with now i'm going to use a square bracket high light underscore switch underscore two close the square bracket and the purpose of the square brackets here is to evaluate what's inside in this case it's the named range highlight underscore switch underscore two next part if dot value equals off then dot value equals on else dot value equals off and if then end with and what this does is with that named range it checks if the value is off and if the value is off it turns the value to be on otherwise it just turns the value to be off so this is the switch part and this with end with structure just makes sure that it's easy to reference the named range so i don't have to type it out all the time i can just refer to that named range dot value and the dot value is the value of the named range right so let's go back into excel and then we'll check how this works to do that i'm going to add a shape and assign the macro so we'll go to insert then head into shapes click on this rectangle i'm going to hold down the alt key to snap to the grid and choose that shape let's change the color i'll choose this style and then i'll type in here toggle on off I'll tell you what toggle highlight i think that's clearer now click off this what i want to do is actually make sure that we middle align it and center align it why not make it bold while we're here and i'll just change the formatting here to middle align it now i'm going to right click and assign a macro the macro we're going to choose is in this workbook 
So you have a choice between all workbooks, this workbook and the other workbooks that I have open. We're looking for this one, sheet eight toggle underscore click. So I'll click on that then click on OK. What that's done is assign the macro to that shape. So when I click off it and then click back on, you'll see it changes the off to the on and it starts highlighting. So we have our highlighting as we did before. Anytime we want to switch it off, we just click on the button. Toggles off, toggles on. And the last thing to remember is to save this as a macro enabled file because we want to be able to store all the macros that we've added. To do that, just head into file and click save as, and then choose this option for macro enabled workbook. Now for a bonus, when you're working with big data sets like this, see as soon as I scroll down, you lose the header. So if I keep scrolling, you'll forget which column this was. Now, in order to keep the headers in view, we can do two things. So option one would be to click on the row below, head up to the ribbon, click on view, and click on freeze panes, and click on freeze panes. What this does is it freezes everything above this row. So as I scroll down, the data moves, but the headers don't. And I can undo that if I press freeze panes and unfreeze panes. Now option two is to create a data table. I will select the data, control shift, right arrow, down arrow, let go of control shift, and then head up to the ribbon again, click on insert, click table. What this does is it creates a data table. I'll check the range is correct, and my table has headers, in this case is correct, so we're good to go. I click on OK, and what this has done is it's changed this range into a data table. So first of all, if I scroll down, you'll see the headers are now replacing the column headers. So instead of seeing A, B, C, D, E, we see opportunity name, sales agent, sales region, and so on. And the other thing the data table allows you to do is to click on this drop down and sort A to Z, Z to A, and sort by color or filter. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. Check the description below for a list of the best Excel resources. If you want to learn how to automate Excel with VBA macros, look for my online course, Launch Excel Macros and VBA School. And if you want more free video tutorials, make sure you subscribe. See you next time.